Hello and welcome to the last section that we are going to cover this year. This is lesson 10-5 and we're going to be looking at the surface area of prisms and cylinders. So to begin with, you have to understand what surface area is. And by definition, the surface area is the sum of the areas of the bases and lateral faces of a space figure. So essentially we're adding up all of the areas of the sides and faces and bases that consume an object. So another way that you could think about this is if you are taking a present and you are going to wrap this object, you need to know how much wrapping paper you need because the wrapping paper is what is going to cover the surface area. Anything that that wrapping paper touches or any side, if you think about wrapping like a box, every side that that wrapping paper touches is the surface area of that object. So that's what we're trying to find. So we have two different methods that we can use to do this. The first method, or method one, says that we're going to find the area of each lateral face and then the base and add them all together. So if we look at how, at, let's say this rectangular prism here, okay, we have lateral faces. So I'm gonna highlight this here in yellow. You can see that we have this face in the front, which is 20 inches by a height of eight inches. So I have 20 inches times eight inches. So that's the first face. And then if you notice, you actually have that same face is going to be back here. So we really have two of those. So I'm actually going to write the number two in the front to show that we have two of those faces. And if I multiply these together, I have 40 times eight, which is going to give me 320 square inches. Then my next face that I have is I have my two ends. So here, and you can kind of see we've got the same thing over here. That's got a height of eight and a width of five. So when I go to find that surface area, I again have two ends, so I'm going to go two times eight times five, and this is going to give me, I'm going to go two times five is ten times eight, so I have 80 square inches. And then I have two more sets of faces here, and those two faces are going to be the top and the bottom faces. So I have this face right here, and then the one that is parallel to that here on the bottom. So if we look at the dimension of those, that gives me 20 wide by five long. So, and again, I have two of those. So I'm gonna go two times 20 times five, or 10 times 20, which will give me 200 square inches. Now, all I have to do is add up these three numbers, and that will give me my total surface area. So when I do that, I end up with 600 square inches. So if I was buying wrapping paper, if this is as if this were a gift, I would need 600 square inches of wrapping paper to cover that rectangular prism there. Let's look at this triangular prism here. Here, I see I have a right triangle on the end here, and I also have one on the opposite end, so I'm gonna find the area of both of those faces. So I'm going to have two bases, and I know the area of a triangle is one half times its base, which is three yards, times its height, which is four yards, and if I multiply those all together, my two and one half is gonna cancel, so I'm left with 12 yards squared. Then I have, I'm gonna look at this back base here. So you can see that this rectangle there is going to have a height of three and a width of six. So I have six times three which is 18 square yards. Then I'm gonna have the face that falls here on the bottom. You can kind of see that right there. 
the dimensions of that are going to be four yards by this six because that six would actually go all the way down to the bottom. So I have four times six, which is 24 yards squared. And then I'm going to have this top face, um, and I'll do that in black here. And you can see that we have this shape here and we have to find this area of that piece. So that's going to be six yards by this length here, which is five. So if I multiply six times five, I end up with 30 yards squared. And again, I'm just gonna add all of these up. And when I do that, I end up with 84 square yards. And that's how much wrapping paper, if you wanna think about it like that, it would take to cover this triangular prism or what the square yardage would be. For the second method, we're going to use what we call the lateral area. Now the lateral area is the sum of the areas of the lateral faces. So when finding the lateral area, we're actually going to use the formula that you see here where it says lateral area equals P times H. Now P represents the perimeter. And remember perimeter is when you add up all the side lengths around the outside. So this is the perimeter of the base. And then H is going to be the height of the object. Okay, so if we look at this, we have um, this figure right here is kind of what this shape would look like if we were to cut, let's say along one of the sides, so we'll say we cut along this edge here and we open that up. So this A goes with this side length. Then we're gonna go to the next side length of B, which you can see right here. Then we'd have this side length of C and then this side length of D. So if you take all four of those or you add up around the perimeter of the base here, that's going to be the perimeter piece and then you have to multiply that perimeter by the height. Now when we do that, what this does is this only finds the area around the outside, okay? It does not find the area of the top face here or the bottom face here. So to find the surface area, you're gonna take the lateral area that we just found and add that to twice the area of the base. Okay, so twice the area of the base is going to account for this top piece and this bottom piece because you're going to have two pieces and you just find the area of that. So it would be like A times B in this case. So let's go ahead and look at an example and see how that works. So we would have the um, example still in front of us. I did leave this up here at the top. Okay, and let's look at a triangular prism and then we'll look at a rectangular prism. So for the triangular prism, okay, we can see that we have a triangle, okay? We have a side length of five, so this is an isosceles triangle because both of these are the same length, a base length of six across, the height of that triangle is four, and then we have a total length of 12 centimeters for this prism. So to figure out how to do this using method two, what we're gonna do is we are going to find the perimeter of the base. So perimeter is going to be this five plus this six plus this five. So I have five plus five plus six or 16 centimeters. And then to find the lateral area, I'm gonna take that perimeter, which is 16 centimeters, and I'm going to multiply that by the height of that object. And technically the height of the object is this height right here. So I'm gonna multiply this by 12 centimeters. And when I do, I end up with 192 centimeters squared. So this is my lateral area. And now I still have to account for the two ends which are this triangular shape here 
and this triangular shape there for my surface area because my surface area has to include covering those two ends as well. So the 192 only covers around the kind of like the tall part of the gift. Okay, so now to find my surface area. So surface area is going to equal our lateral area of 192 centimeters squared plus two times the area of our base. And the area of our base is one half times the base, which is six right here, times the height, which is four, because that's this height right here. So when we compute all of this, I end up with 192 plus two times a half is gonna cancel because that's just gonna give me one. I have six times four, which is 24. So when I add 192 to 24, we end up with 216 square centimeters. And this right here would be the surface area of that triangular prism. Now, when we look at the second part here for this rectangular prism, rectangular prisms are a little bit nicer. So using method two on this rectangular prism, I need to find the perimeter of my base. And I do that by adding up, this down here is going to be the base. So I can see that I have three plus four plus three plus four, or this is going to give me seven and seven, which is 14 meters. So to find my lateral area, I have 14 meters, which is my perimeter, and I'm gonna multiply that by the height, which is six meters, and 14 times six is going to give me 84 meters squared. Then to find my surface area, I'm gonna take that 84 square meters, and I'm going to add that to twice the base, and the base in this case is going to be the three times the four. So I have two times three times four. So here I have 84 square inch or meters plus two times three is six times four, which is 24. So when I add 84 and 24, I end up with 108 meters squared. So that would be the surface area of this rectangular prism. The last shape that we're gonna look at this year is um, finding the surface area of a cylinder. And if you recall, a cylinder kind of looks like this or this right here, okay? Essentially a can shape, okay? And if you wanna find the surface area of a can, kind of the best way to think about this is if you were to cut Okay, this can, let's say we just were to put a slice in the label and we unpeeled that label, we would end up with a rectangular shape. So the height of that label would be from the height of the can. And then this length right here is going to actually be the distance around that circle, otherwise known as the circumference. And if we recall, circumference is 2 pi r, which is this part right here. So when we find the circumference, we're actually, or sorry, to find the lateral area of our circle, we're actually going to take that circumference, which is 2 pi r, and then we're just going to multiply it by the height, and that is going to get us that surface area of the outside of the can, or the surface area that the, the soup label would cover. Then... If we want to find the surface area of the complete cylinder, we still have to take into account um, the two ends. So we have to find the ends or the areas of each end. And if you remember the area of a circle, or in this case, they're calling it the base, the area of a circle is going to be pi r squared. So our surface area is going to be found by taking that lateral area and adding it to the area of the base times two. So if you look at the textbook definition, it just says the lateral area of a cylinder is the product of the circumference of the base and the height of the cylinder. Okay, that gives us that 2 pi rh here. 
And then to find the surface area, we're gonna take that lateral area and we're going to add it to the areas of the two bases of this cylinder. And that's all there is to it. So we'll look at one final example and then you guys will be done. So example three says to find the surface area of the can at the right. So we are going to start out by finding the lateral area, which is what the label covers, and the lateral area of a can, remember, is going to be 2 pi r h. So when I plug in what I know, I know that I have 2 times pi, which is roughly 3.14. My radius is given right here, and that's given to be 3.5. And then my height is this 11.5. So I have 11.5. And when I multiply all of this together, we end up with something close to 253 square centimeters. Then we have to find the areas of the base. So remember the base is pi r squared, which in this case is 3.14 times the base, which is 3.5 squared. And remember, squared really means that I have 3.5 times 3.5, and I'm still multiplying that by 3.14. So if we multiply all these together, you should find something close to 38 point, I have 465, so I'm going to put 38.5 centimeters squared. But remember, we really have two of these bases because we have the top and we'll have the bottom. So if I find want to find what 2B is, this is really going to be 2 times 38.5, and that's going to give us 76.93 centimeters squared. So now, when I go to find my surface area, because that's ultimately what this question was asking, so surface area is going to be that uh, 253 or approximately 253 plus the 76.93 and when I add those together I got 329.93 or approximately 330 square centimeters which is what the area or surface area of that can would be. At this point in time, I would like to congratulate you for completing all of the lessons that we're going to cover in this crazy 2020 school year. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. I am so incredibly proud of all of the hard work that you guys have been putting in. I do appreciate it. I promise you, you will reap the rewards um, later on. This has been a very tasking um, couple of weeks since we left school on March th 13th, but I do applaud you and I am, like I said, I'm so proud of you for sticking with it. So on that note, I hope you guys have a great day and I will talk to you later. Thanks and have a good one.